So yesterday, I was out on the street in front of the uh, front of this building, and I was walking down the sidewalk, and I had company, several of us, and we were all abiding by the rules of walking down sidewalks. Okay, we're not talking to each other. We're facing forward. We're moving. When the person in front of me slows down, and so I'm watching him, and he slows down, and finally he stops. Well, that wasn't fast enough for me. So I put on my turn signal, and I walked around him. And as I walked, I looked to see what he was doing, and he was doing this. He was texting, and he couldn't text and walk at the same time. Now, we could approach this from a working memory perspective or from a multitasking perspective. We're going to do working memory today. Now, working memory is that part of our consciousness that we are uh, aware of at any good time of day. You're doing it right now. It's not something we can turn off. If you turn it off, that's called a coma. Okay? <laughs> so right now, you're doing just fine. Now, working memory has four basic components. It allows us to store some immediate experiences and a little bit of knowledge. It allows us to reach back into our long-term memory and pull some of that in as we need it. Mixes it, processes it, in light of whatever our current goal is. Now, the current goal isn't something like, I want to be president or the best surfer in the world. It's more mundane. I'd like that cookie. Or I need to figure out how to get into my hotel room. Okay? Now, working memory capacity is our ability to leverage that. Our ability to take what we know and what we can hang on to and leverage it in ways that allow us to satisfy our current goal. Now, working memory capacity has a fairly long history, and it's associated with a lot of positive effects. People with high working memory capacity tend to be good storytellers. They tend to solve and do well on standardized tests, however important that is. Okay. They're able to have high levels of writing ability. They're also able to reason at high levels. So what we're going to do here is play a little bit with some of that. So I'm going to ask you to perform a couple tasks, and we're going to take your working memory out for a ride. You up for that? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give you five words, and I just want you to hang on to them. Don't write them down. Just hang on to them. Five words. While you're hanging on to them, I'm going to ask you to answer three questions. I want to see what happens with those words. So here's the words. Tree. Highway. Mirror. Saturn, and Electrode. So far, so good? Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to tell me what the answer is to 23 times 8. Just shout it out. <laughs> it, in fact, it's... <laughs> exactly. All right. I want you to take out your left hand, and I want you to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a neurological test, just in case you're wondering. All right. Now what I want you to do is to recite the last five letters of the English alphabet backwards. You should have started with Z. All right. All right. How many people here are still pretty sure you've got all five words? Okay. Typically, we end up with about less than half. All right, which is normal. There'll be a range. Some people can hang on to five, some can hang on to ten, some will be down in two, two or three. What we know is this is really important to the way we function. Okay? And it's going to be really important here at TED because you're going to be exposed to so many different ideas. Now, the problem that we have is that life comes at us and it comes at us very quickly. And what we need to do is to take that amorphous um, flow of experience and somehow extract meaning from it with a working memory that's about the size of a pea. Now, don't get me wrong, working memory is awesome. Okay? Working memory allows us to investigate our current experience as we move forward. It allows us to make sense of the world around us. Okay? But it does have certain limits. Now, working memory is great for allowing us to communicate. We can have a conversation, and I can build a narrative around that. So I know where we've been and where we're going and how to contribute to this conversation. Allows us to problem solve, critical think. We can be in the middle of a meeting, listen to somebody's presentation, evaluate it, decide whether or not we like it, ask follow-up questions. All of that occurs within working memory. 